this is maybe an opportunity to bring in uh, Dawkins, which you talk about in one of your books, because he talks about middle world, right? And middle world, right? We haven't evolved, I mean, literally in an evolutionary sense, the mind to intuitively understand things at the nano level or at the cosmological level. And so that's why for most people, folk physics might make sense, but quantum physics, which defies the way most of us have evolved to understand how you throw a ball or a spear, uh, it's going to break down. So draw that bridge for us. How do we go from nano world to cosmological world? Yeah, well, first of all, note that what Dawkins said is clearly false. We we do understand <laughs> the nano world and we do understand the macro world, the, the quasar uh, distance. But it's not intuitive, world. maybe. That's what he was saying. Oh, no, that... yeah, it's not intuitive, but nor is the fact that the Earth is round. Fair enough. <laughs> in, in fact, as I always say, uh, I actually find it an extreme effort to grok the fact that people in Australia are upside down. <laughs> and if I look down in, into the ground and imagine looking down, what I will see is their feet. <laughs> now, I know that intellectually. I, I can show it in mathematical terms. I can give evidence, uh, you know, and, and so on. But actually, intuitively understanding it, I don't think I've quite got there. Amazing. Um, w when you do any kind of science... When you get to the edge, of course, you find things that are counterintuitive because if they had been intuitive, they would have been discovered long ago. <laughs> right. Aristotle did lots of observations and he got lots of things wrong. And, and uh, so science is about understanding things that go beyond our intuition. Um, so um, the, the way we go from one to the other, you know, I, I thought you were going to ask, this is at the nano level. How do we know that it applies to the to the everyday level and and to the quasar level and so on? Well, we we do. I mean, of course, all scientific theories are temporary, so we will no doubt have better theories in the future. But there's there's no problem with understanding the world in so far as it goes via quantum theory or via general relativity and, and uh, or both. Um, the way we know for example, is that the cosmic microwave background radiation um, was released into, the <laughs> in, into somewhere that we can see when the universe was very small compared with uh, how it is now, and very small and very dense. And the, um, uh, the physical processes affecting it were subject to another quantum phenomenon, quantum fluctuations, which is a bowdlerized or, or sanitized way of saying um, interference from other universes. But we call it fluctuations as, as if, you know, it's going uh, fuzzing like, like um, boiling, boiling water, but it's not like that at all. It's just different in different universes and they affect each other. And we can work out from that how that microwave background radiation is going to look um, 13 point something billion years ago, uh, billion years later, uh, when we look up in the sky and we see the microwave background radiation is patchy. Well, what are those patches? You know, how big are they? How intense are they? We can work it out from um, quantum theory. And lo and behold, that's what we see. Well, actually, we see it, I forget what it is now, we see it about 40% different from how it actually looks, from, from what we predict, which is a big problem in cosmology at the moment. But, but you know, that doesn't affect, that doesn't affect the, the fact that the smallest level we know about affects the largest level we know about. Amazing. Um, in a testable way.